because it's an important call. Okay, so hi guys. It's so good to see everybody on here. Tonight is August 1st, the first, it's August 1st, the first day of August. Imagine that, wow, did I just blow all your minds. Um, I'm really excited to see my brand new coach, Daniela, on this call. Hey, go ahead. Um, she's been kicking ass in the shift shop, and I'm super proud of her, and I'm super pumped for her to start paying it forward. And, you know, join this kick-ass group. I mean, let's be real. We're pretty freaking cool. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about a topic that I think we tend to struggle with um, occasionally. So there's no notes. There's no bullet points. So it may go a little long. Cindy may chime in and it might go twice as long. So I'm just letting you guys know. Bear with us a little bit. Okay. So there's a lot of you in our diamond or bust group. Who's all in that group? Diamond or bust. Okay. So a lot of you in there. And I know a lot of you that are not in there have been shooting for your own goals, whether they're financial, they're um, physical, mental, um, rank, any, anything that you can put a date mark, a date mark, a date mark, a stamp mark on a date and say, this is what I want to do by this date or this is what I want to achieve by then, right? Maybe you just started your own journey. Maybe you've been on it for a while. Maybe you've been trying to lose 10 pounds. Maybe you've been trying to make $100 a week or $1,000 a month. Whatever it is, this is going to be a good call for you. No matter when, you guys can always come back and listen to this call. So first things first, I want you guys to, who, have, who are you guys are moms or grandmas on here? Parents. Okay. So we all know what it's like when we miss a mark, right? Maybe we've been eating so good all week long and we step on that scale and that bastard says, oh, you're only down 0.2 ounces. You get super defeated, right? You're like, son of a bitch. Like I've been doing good. I've been killing my workouts. I've been eating clean. Or maybe you've been working so hard in your business. You've been sending out these invites. You've been posting really good on social media, but no one seems to want to join you, right? Do you guys get what I'm saying? Does this like resonate with any of you guys. So what's the first thing we, we do? We get defeated. And usually when we get defeated, we get discouraged and we take a step back, right? Instead of continuing going forward. So imagine you moms and you grandmas on here, your kid's learning to ride a bike, right? Every time your child gets on a bike for their first time, they fall, right? What are you going to say to that kid? Are you going to make them feel defeated, discouraged? You can't do it. You suck at riding that bike. You don't need to try again. Would you ever say that to your kid? No. You would give them a pat on the back. You'd pick them up. You'd maybe put peroxide on their graveled, infested knees. You know, you'd pick them up. You'd love them. You'd kiss them. And you'd be like, let's try it again. Let's try again. Because what? Practice makes perfect, right? And you'd encourage them. You'd show them love. You'd show them support. But why is it so hard for us to do that to ourselves? If you've seen your girlfriend, you know, one of your closest friends, maybe she was working towards the same goal you have been working towards, right? And she came to you and she's like, oh my gosh, Cindy, you know, I've been working so hard and I failed. I failed. This is where I fell short. Maybe I wasn't good enough. Maybe I don't deserve this. What would you say? You would give her love, support, and encouragement, right? Then why is it so dang often that we are so hard on ourselves? The one that can encourage, love, and support everybody else, where is that for yourself? I was very proud today when I woke up and I went in this diamond <clears throat> or bust group, and I seen people because... You know, if you guys don't know, now they're doing a diamond, um, a diamond bonus, right? So every quarter you get a diamond bonus, but you have to hit success club three months in a row. So it was July, August, and September to qualify for this quarter's bonus. So a lot of people were pushing for success club in July, right? Success club is when you help three people with the challenge pack, whether they're a challenger or a coach or Shakeology on HD or daily sunshine or, or, or you, you guys get the drift. I'm not the FAQ expert, but <clears throat> so a lot of people were like, you know what? I missed it. I missed hitting success club. Maybe that they, they didn't get any, maybe they got, you know, they helped one or two people. But what I seen on there 
it made like it made me feel so proud of being a part of such amazing women because there was women in there saying you know what i didn't hit success club but i stepped out of my comfort zone for the very first time i reached out to more people than i ever have i actually did my fo- my power hour every single day and i've been coaching for 2 years there was all these things that women were showing up and they were proud of And so here's the thing, guys, life, you're always going to miss the mark. Maybe not always, but a lot of the times you're going to miss the mark. You're going to miss the goal, just a tidbit. You're going to try it again. Maybe you're hit it the second time or the third time. But the thing of it is, as long as you keep fighting for whatever goal it is, your actions are putting your, your actions are aligning with your goal. Maybe the date is just changing. Maybe the day that you actually hit it is just down the road a little bit further. But if you keep making those action steps to it and you keep that positive mindset, you're going to hit it. And you need to celebrate the wins along the way. Because if you're celebrating the wins along the way, you're less likely to get discouraged. You're less likely to get defeated and feel like a failure and then start talking down on yourself. I'm not meant to be a coach. I'm not good at this. And then what happens? We start eating our feelings or drinking our feelings or shy away from everybody and not lean in anymore, right? Because I know a lot of us do that, right? We pull away because we feel ashamed. Oh, everybody else hit their goal. I don't want to show up anymore. You know, I didn't work out for two days, so I'm not going to post anymore in the group. I'm not going to encourage anybody because no one wants to hear it from me because I can't even stay on track. Has any of you guys said any of these things to yourself? It's a horrible feeling and it's it's a need, not a want, but a need that we need to separate from. We need to get it out of our system. And I know a lot of the times... Just like our weight loss journey, just like our mental wellness journey, it's not always going to be positive. We're going to have a roller coaster. It's going to go up and downhill. But as long as we keep working on it, it'll get easier and we'll get better. And we will be better at leaning in and asking for support when we need it. Right? One thing really quick this is like kind of sidetracking. Next week, you guys, The author of Lovable, Kelly Flanagan, is guest speaking on our team call. And it's on Wednesday next week, same time, but on Wednesday. You guys are going to freaking love him because he talks a lot about shame. And he talks a lot about believing in yourself and self-awareness over the things that um, we we focus on more and the things that we need to focus on less, you know, because we tend to focus on the bad, but we we need to focus on the good more. Um, funny story really quick. <clears throat> One of my followers on Instagram actually goes to him as a therapist and she, she saw me poke, posting his book on my face or my Instagram. And she was like, Oh my God, I go to him. Blah, blah, blah. I've been going to him for three and a half years. Do you want your, uh, book autograph? And I was like, yeah, but I'm not going to send it to you now. Cause I'm, I'm reading it. Right. Um, and so one day I, I posted another thing about it and she's like, you know, he speaks or he does public calls or public talking. And I was like, would he ever talk on my team call? Because I know a lot, a lot of coaches, I mean, fuck, let's just be real. A lot of women in general lack belief in themselves, right? And we carry shame on our back like it's a sack of potatoes. Like whatever it is, whatever our environment is, maybe it's magazines, maybe it's social media, maybe it's like um, what other people expect us to be. You hate potatoes. (laughs) Um, But whatever, for whatever reason, we have grown up into these women that carry shame around and we have a really hard time letting it go, right? Like it's uncomfortable. It makes us depressed. It gives us anxiety. We don't do the things that we want to do. And it sucks. And there's so many people out there too that are struggling with it that don't have the support in the community that we have. They don't have the resources and being able to find personal development that can help them. So real quick, don't forget about the things that you have to offer other people. Okay. Like 
whether you're close to where you want to be in life, always share, always share what it is that you're doing. Always share, you know, your struggles and your triumphs. Always share what it is that you're going through because chances are there's a hundred people right now with their eyes on you struggling with the same exact thing. And they think that they're alone. They think that they're the only ones. You know, I bet you if I asked you who struggles with shame, raise your hand. Anyone struggle with shame? Look at that. Look at that. Look how common it is to struggle with shame. Now, I bet you if you made a post tonight and you asked your friends, your followers, if they struggle with shame, I wonder how many people would say I do. Because it's so freaking common. It is so freaking common, it's sad. And you know the thing that's getting worse? As we get older, I feel like the generations younger than us develop that shame feeling earlier, right? Like I remember feeling shamed in eighth grade, right? There's kids younger than that struggling with shame now. But the thing of it is, like, see, Cindy, you see it in your 11-year-old. The thing of it is, guys, like, we are doing, we are a coach for a reason, right? Everyone decided to be a Beachbody coach for a reason. Maybe you wanted to get out of debt. Maybe you needed your own accountability towards your own journey. Maybe you needed, like, a passion or a purpose in life other than just being a mom, even though being a mom is fantastic, but you needed something more than that. Maybe you wanted you know, wanted to travel the world. Maybe you wanted to meet new friends, whatever it was. But the thing of it is, you all have to realize you're a beach body coach that means more than just you. The people that we can touch, we can like, we can literally reach the world. We could reach so many people that are in pain right now, struggling. And it's not even just the moms and dads we're, we're reaching or the aunts and uncles. If we reach out to enough people and make an impact, a big enough impact, it could affect their children. Do you, do you understand? Like if you post a motivational quote or a little takeaway from your personal development that you read about shaming or feeling guilty or being imperfect, right? Something that a lot of people also struggle with is perfection or having control. And you share that. And then a mom reads it. And she reads it to her teenage daughters. And that sets something in, in them. Do you see it's helping more than just you? Oh my gosh. You guys are chatty Cathy's over here. And I'm trying to keep up. And I'm trying to talk. And y'all are sidetracking me. Talking without me. I see how you are. But we tend to keep things to ourselves because we're afraid we let fear hold us back because either we've never done it before or we're afraid of what people are going to think or we're afraid of being salesy or being you know put, posting too much being too vulnerable we don't think that people want to see us working out they don't care what we think they don't care what we're doing we have all this fear which also stems from shame, right? But if we put that out of our minds and we think like this, something that I shared in the Diamond Mind group this morning, and I'm sorry that I keep bringing this up because I'm sure a lot of you are like, what the hell? I need it in the script or whatever. But one thing I shared in there, I said, what if, like imagine this. I know inviting is hard, right? Inviting is scary. It's hard. You're afraid of what people are going to say or think or whatever, right? But what if you knew without a doubt that if you sent out an invite to a coaching opportunity that you knew it would help a family be able to not have to foreclose on their home, would you send that invite? If you knew without a doubt that you invited a woman into this community, that it would help her, empower her to leave an abusive marriage, would you do it? If you knew without a doubt that if you invited someone into your challenge group, that they would be able to get off their diabetic medication, their insulin, they'd be able to run and play with their kids all the time, would you do it? 
would you do it? You need to start training your mindset like that because then you would think this is big. This is something that we have in our hands that can literally save lives, not just change lives, but save lives. But yet we don't open our arms and let people in because we're afraid, because of shame, because we let that shit hold us back. And what needs to happen is we need to forget all that, that dumb stuff. We are good enough. Here's the thing. Everybody, everybody on, there's not one person that I've met or talked to that says, you know what? I'm good enough and I didn't need no help. And if there is, they're probably narcissistic and they have inner, inner issues anyways. But there's so many people that think they're not good enough. I'm not a good enough mom. I'm not a good enough teacher. I'm not a good enough spouse. I'm not a good enough attorney. I'm not a good enough X, Y, and Z, right? When are you good enough? Is it because of what other people say that you are, or is it because of what you say you are? What matters most? Because I promise you, if you work on feeling good enough and being good enough in your own skin, in your own eyes, you won't care what other people say. You'll stop trying to please them and instead, you'll open your arms up to them and say, how can I help you? How can I make you feel good enough? What can I give to you to make your life better? Make sure, like this call is kind of intertwining into next week's call, so make sure that you guys are on next week. But the thing of it is, like I wanted to get on tonight and talk to you guys about, yeah, you know what? In life, we're going to miss our goals. Weight loss? Weight loss fucking sucks. This journey is hard as F. I ain't. I say fuck and then I say F, like it makes perfect sense, but it's, it's hard. If anyone's been on their weight loss journey, you know, it's hard. First off, get the scale the hell out of the house. GTFO scale. No, nobody needs that. Right. But we know it's hard. And especially if you experience like emotional eating, it's hard, right? Like I'll be doing so good. And then I'll eat one of my kids pizza bones gain seven pounds. Like what the hell is that? Like the scale anyways. So we let certain things dictate how we're supposed to feel, whether we're supposed to feel proud or whether we're supposed to feel shame. In life, everything's a roller coaster. Your business, your relationships, your own wellness, your physical fitness, everything is a roller coaster. Some days we're going to hit the goal on the date we set. That's great, grand, and wonderful. But other days we're not. On those days and every day, we need to be celebrating the things that we're doing to get there. Because if you start forgetting the things that you're doing to get there, you're going to stop. That date's going to come around and you're going to stop. Or you know what's even worse? You're going to hit that goal and you're going to stop anyway. Right? Like how many coaches have gotten to Emerald or have gotten to Diamond or gotten to Success Club 5 and then they just stop? I already hit it. I don't need to work anymore this month. Right? You work every day like you're out there to change lives. You work every day like there's no plan B. We've talked about that before. You work every day because you have a mission. You have a purpose as a beach body coach to help somebody, to be someone, someone, whether they sign up with a free group, a challenge group, a coach, whatever. It is your mission now. Stop half-assing it because you're scared. Stop half-assing it because you feel dele deleted, because you feel defeated, because you didn't hit your goal. Stop half-assing it because the sun's shining and it's cool to drink beers at the beach when you should be inviting. We're vacuuming. Someone's vacuuming. I totally hear someone vacuuming. I'm trying to mute everybody real quick. Everyone's muted. Who's vacuuming? That was weird. It was my air conditioner. Oh. Oh, okay. Lucky, I need an air conditioning unit up in here. 
Um, see, yeah. But what we need to do is we need to focus and celebrate the actions that we take to get to where we want to be. Are you doing the four vital behaviors every day? Are you starting your day with personal development? Are you connecting and making new friends? Are you working on yourself? Because you can't, you can't talk the talk if you're not walking the walk, right? See, you guys are all laughing in this chat and it's not fair. Like, I can't keep up with that. You guys are rude. Rude. But you need to be working on yourself. And another thing is, you need to be recognizing. You need to be shouting out other coaches or challengers or people that inspire you or that motivate you or that's changed or transformed or stepped out of their comfort zone. Because what happens when you're recognized? Anybody. Does it make you want to push harder? Go further? Do better? It makes you feel good. And then when, <clears throat> when other people see that, they're like, oh my gosh. Well, not only can Corinne do it, but so could she. Not only can Jackie do it, but so can this girl. And it makes people feel like it's possible, right? For the longest time, I only shared, I've, only, I've lost 130 pounds. I've lost 130 pounds. That's all my transfer, Transformation Tuesdays would be, right? And then I started realizing it. It wasn't getting a shit ton of traction anymore. Why? Because people started seeing the big picture like, oh my gosh, that's too much. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's too much, right? But if I start sharing my program results that I've been doing, like Shift Shop, people are like, oh my gosh, 10 pounds. I could totally do 10 pounds. I got 10 pounds to lose. I could do 10 pounds. So start showcasing the other girls. Maybe you have no coaches and that's fine. Look at all these 32 other women in here that you can share their progress photos. Ask nicely first. Don't be a jerk and just steal them. I'm just kidding. I've totally stolen photos before. Um, but the thing of it is, you guys have to realize, if you, get if you let things like missing a goal discourage you, you're pushing yourself backwards. You're losing your momentum. And we all know what it's like to get momentum, right? It's hard. But once you get it, you're like, you kind of feel unstoppable. You're like, okay, I'm doing good. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to message. You know what? I have five more minutes. I'm going to message some more people. But then we let something so minor, so minor in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Hitting, hitting success club in July is minor. Yes. You want to help people, but if you missed it, it's minor. Because what are the things that you were doing to help people in July? What were the things that you were doing that you've never done before? What were the things that you did today to get you to where you want to be tomorrow? Because I bet you, some of you, and I may be wrong, but I know I've done this before. When I didn't hit my mark on that said goal date, what happened to me the next day? I probably stuffed my face in a tub of Ben and Jerry's and didn't touch my keyboard once because I was defeated. And I let all that negative self-talk in my head. My workouts went out the window and nutrition went out the window. I wasn't doing myself or anyone else a favor because I let something so minor be so numbing to me. You know, a lot of you guys know this. I've hit... I've missed elite three years in a row, three years in a row. The first two years, and I know Cindy without a doubt knows this, the first two years, it paralyzed me, literally paralyzed me. I was a mess. I was a mess. And I promise like this year, if you guys were on our call where we're not pushing for elite anymore and me and Cindy did, I don't know, March or something, maybe February, but we, we want to help others build for income, not rank. We want to stop focusing so much on the goal when others set a date because it's discouraging. It's defeating. That's not why we're here. I'm not here to wear a big shiny thing at Summit that says I'm elite. I'm not here to walk on stage. Yes, that's great, grand, and wonderful. 
but I'm here to change lives. I'm here to help women love themselves. I'm here to help women find support. I'm here to help others with guidance when it comes to their own personal wellness, their physical fitness, and their eating habits. I know what it's like to do it by myself. And it's hard. It is hard feeling alone. It is hard feeling like you're all by yourself in this world, whether you're married or whether you have quote unquote friends. I know you all know what it's like. It's hard. And that's why we're here because we can be that, that someone in that person's life to help them through that, help them see how beautiful they are, no matter what size or shape they are. Help them see that they are worth it, that they deserve an abundance of happiness and wealth and success. That is our mission. That is our job. Not only if we hit our goal. Every day, that's our job. Make a goal every day that you're just going to do the best that you can every day. And then celebrate. Celebrate it every day. Go to bed with gratitude. Go to bed feeling blessed. Go to bed being thankful that you have this opportunity where you can actually do something. I love you all, and I want you guys to know that you deserve the best that life has to offer. And so do so many other people around you. You have to get out there You have to put yourself out there as scary as it may seem at first or the hundredth time, but you got to do it because there's people out there hurting. There's women out there hurting. There's people out there that are financially unstable, unsupported. They need help. They need you. So I want you guys to go into August not setting a goal date, not setting a grand slam, but I want you to go saying that you're going to give your best as a beach body coach, as a challenger, please, every single day, every single day. You're going to devote 110% of your energy into being the best challenger that you can be. Because if you don't work on yourself, then you can't help anyone else. And if you work as coaching five days a week, six days a week, I want you to give your best at the time frame that you set for yourself at coaching. I'm not saying give your best at coaching six days a week, seven hours a day. That's unrealistic, and I would never, ever tell you to do that. I personally only work my business four and a half-ish hours a day five days a week. But if you only work once a day or once one hour a day or four time blocks, whatever you do, give your best. Your goal is to do your best, the best that you can. Every day is going to be different. Don't let that defeat you. Don't let that discourage you. Some days Aunt Flo is going to be in town. Some days your energy levels are going to be skyrocketed. Some days your kids are going to be hellions. But what you can do is do your best no matter what. And stop letting things paralyze you that are so minor. Because in the grand scheme of things, they don't matter. Right? I want, I have a little bit of assignment for you guys. And Daniela, you're going to love this. You're welcome. Okay, so as a bunch of you guys know, Tuesdays are a great opportunity to share Transformation Tuesday photos, right? Yeah, see, I see your face already. I see it, I see it. But since we're talking about shame, I want you guys to do a transformation photo more on the inside. I want you to focus more on the inside and how whether it's been one day, one week, one year that you've been working on your personal wellness, 
your mental health, your inner self-love or, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I want you to create a post tonight about your transform, tra whoa, transformation on the inside and talk about shame. Oh, look at Yvette. I already got it. Woo -woo. It's hard. It's going to be hard. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. Um, it's going to be hard because a lot of people struggle with shame. And a lot of people don't talk about shame. But as you saw on here, it's more common than one thinks. Because I bet every single one of you that raised your hand thought you were going to be probably one of the only ones that did, right? Because we think that we're the only one that struggles. But any time that anyone has ever posted a photo or a post about how they're struggling with, you know, weight or emotional eating or um, getting down on themselves, whatever it is, I've seen a lot of feedback in the comments below. Oh my gosh, I've been struggling with this too. Oh my gosh, I just went through this. Oh my gosh, blah, blah, blah. Because you're not alone. But I'm telling you, if you put yourself out there, maybe people aren't going to come to you. Maybe they're not going to be like, oh my God, Jackie, I'm going to buy a challenge pack because that post was so awesome about shame. I'm not saying that's going to happen. But what I'm saying is you're going to tell other women, other people out there that it's okay. That it's okay. And, and they are going to show them that vulnerability is where we connect. That's where true connections happen. That's where you develop trust in other people. Because you're not faking it. You're not acting like this journey is, I was going to say breadcrumbs. I don't know where that was coming from. But like gumdrops and butterflies, it's not easy. You're showing that we still struggle. Whatever shame that we're holding onto, we still struggle. But we're working on it. And that is what is so great about this team, about this business, about this opportunity, because it gives you that option, that opportunity to work through the things that paralyze you. Do you guys get that? Like what other job, what other career out there gives you that opportunity to feel like to legitimately feel better? to let all that weight go that you've carried for 20, 30, 40 years. What other jobs out there inspire you, empower you to become a real, true, better version of yourself while showing other people the way? Stop focusing on the date. Stop focusing on the number of the scale. Stop focusing on the number of a measuring tape. Start celebrating the things that it takes to get there. And, oh my God, sorry. It was my hair. I thought it was a spider crawling on my leg. I almost had a freak out. Anyways. Um, and start letting go of shame. Read the book Lovable, if you have not yet. It is awesome. So awesome that apparently I had to sing it to you. Make sure that you guys are on next week's team call. It is Wednesday at 6.30 Pacific time, 3.30 Hawaiian time, 9.30 Eastern time. This is really hard for me. Time zones. Anyways, does anyone have any questions, comments, or concerns Why I go through the chat box? See what everyone was talking about without me. Yes, fell forward. Um, Cindy, I'm going to respond to your post or your comment. You said, I didn't get XYZ results from this program like so and so did. So I'm just going to, so I'm going to give up on it and try to find a new one instead of committing and going on. 
going all in where I am. So I'm calling you out right here, right? You could unmute yourself or you could just stay there. So that's so done in the past many times. Right. So our, so I got to let you guys know. So, so you are not alone. First week into our official shift shop group, right? I get a text from Cindy. She was very defeated because when, what you lost 0.2 pounds. Mm -hmm. I only lost 0.2 pounds, right? She was super defeated because other women were losing seven pounds, 10 pounds. You know, Nisha lost one pound and like ungodly amount of inches. Like everyone, everyone's body's different, but she got super defeated, right? And then what'd you do, Cindy? I got rid of my scale. Why? So, because I, I realized that, that this is a cycle, a chronic cycle that I've literally done my entire weight loss journey. The only time I didn't do it was when we first started and I lost my first 70 pounds and it was because I was focused on only my daily actions, not on the outcome. Right. Right. And so now, and I, I honestly, I never weighed myself until my very first challenge group. I never did, you know, probably what I got to be 150 pounds overweight. I mean, you got to have some checks and balances, but you know, um, <clears throat> yeah. So now I have no scale in my house and my husband, may or may not bring it back. He hit it. I have no idea where it is. So I can't even, um, sneak a way in if I want to. But, um, one thing I've noticed though, is that, um, like I, in the past, like when I wasn't getting the results that I wanted and I'd still say, you know, I got, I need to finish this program. Obviously I need to be a product of the product. I would not be, um, giving my all during my workouts. I would check my phone. I would do all kinds of things, you know, I would, uh, especially in workouts like this one where there's countdowns, you know, and he even talks about this, Chris Downing does, where don't let the timer run you or you run the timer or whatever. Cause like, I would feel that like, you know, the last like three, four, and I'd be like, oh, I'm done. I'm good. Now I'm going past the timer. Right. Right. So I'm definitely feeling uh, much better and I'm really enjoying it. I'm and I am losing inches. I've lost like over 11 inches now So I am still measuring but um, I think that it's totally a different mindset. And so I think that it's so easy for us to compare um, You know, I've kind of joked about having workout ADD with Beachbody and I mean anyone who's been here a long time Vicki knows this my husband knows this oh my god I have probably made a thousand freaking Beachbody hybrid programs for myself over the past five years and yeah so now I'm done I'm committed to the action steps the same with my business I mean that's exactly why I'm not pushing for rank I know I can't push push my coaches uh to go diamond because no one could push me to go diamond um so instead I'm just focusing on the habits and daily actions and instilling good habits in my coaches and instilling good habits in my challengers and instilling you know leading by example right right but, a hard process to when it's you know it's very personal you know I mean weight loss is so personal and whether you have 150 pounds or 10 pounds to lose you know so it's it's hard process to work through <clears throat> it most definitely is but just like anything you gotta you gotta be consistent mm -hmm. um Angie said um it's not a dumb question when you talk about shame in your transformation post exactly what do you mean okay so me personally, I'll, I'll give you an example. So one thing that I have carried around with, as you call shame is I've always, well, up until recently, I was always, I felt the need to please other people, right? I always felt like I needed to do or be what other people needed from me or needed me to be in order to feel accepted. And if I wasn't hitting the mark, if I was missing it, if I, you know, wasn't this, I would carry that shame around. Like, I'm not good enough. I'm not doing enough. Right. But now I stopped after personal development and really focusing on, you don't need to people please. Cause if you're people pleasing, you're just losing yourself. And when you lose yourself, you carry more shame or another thing, another thing that I could hold an example is I made a post last week about how my son's a picky eater. 
And it makes me feel like a shitty mom because my son will only eat baby carrots, baby carrots as a veggie. Thank God for daily sunshine, Carl Deichler. Thank you very much. But I made a post and I, I've never talked about this on social media. Every time I used to post recipes, women would be like, oh my gosh, does your kid eat the same things you do? Da, da, da. Dude, if, my, if it's not covered in cheese and it's not a carb, my son will not touch it. Cream cheese on his pancakes, tortilla in cheese, macaroni in cheese, but it has to be whole grain. Um, he'll eat strawberries, a half a banana. My kid is the world's pickiest eater. And me trying, like I've had him eat grilled chicken to the point where he gags, like he'll try to make himself throw up. And like, I hold so much shame of that because I'm like, maybe if I would have forced it more when he was smaller, maybe it wouldn't have done this. I'm not a good enough mom because my son's so picky. I'm not, you know, and I think we have a lot of pressure being moms in general from other moms. Um, and so it was really hard for me to put that out there. But what I got in, well, two things. I asked if, if you make a separate meal from your kids and I got a lot of people were like, hell no, they're eating what, what I make them or they're going to bed hungry. And I'm like, oh, I sh probably maybe should do that, which I don't. Um, but, and then when I said that my son's a picky eater and I ordered him something, blah, blah, blah. And I kind of like sprinkled daily sunshine in there, but I didn't talk, I didn't say daily sunshine, but I was saying I was my, I got something because my son's a picky eater and blah, blah, blah. Then I, um, Candy Daring Greatly, or Rising Strong by Brené Brown. Any Brené Brown books, Dealing with Shame. Um, but um, I got a lot of feedback from other moms because I said, you know, I, I let that out there. Like, I feel like I'm not a good mom. I'm going to be real. I feel like I'm not a good mom because of this. And there were so many other moms that said, you know what, we're going through the same thing or we went through the same thing or that doesn't mean that you're not a bad mom. But, you know, whether you're a mom or a woman or whatever, you all have these things that you feel like you need to be better at or you, in your past, you, you could have done something to change that. You know what I mean? To get you to where you are today or, you know, maybe I should have graduated high school or went to college or maybe I should have studied better or maybe I should have done this. But there's so many different ways in our lives that make us carry shame. And like you could, you could focus on any branch of your transformation tree or your transformation story. Does that make sense to you? Like you could focus on any part of your story where you carry shame. Like I don't know your whole story so I can't be like, okay. Uh, pick this one or you know choose this one but you can like really sit down and think about it like what things what what is making me hold on to shame what kind of things like do I feel like the need to be perfect do I feel the need to always just post grilled chicken and asparagus and make people think that I don't binge eat on Taco Bell or you know I'm am I the only Taco Bell lover here jeez tough crowd I'm just kidding but there's Hi. Go ahead. Yeah. I just want to add like, so there's this really good quote that kind of like really helps me keep into perspective. And it totally reminded me of what you said with, um, with Gage, but it says, unlike guilt, which is the feeling of doing something wrong. Like we feel guilty because maybe we, you know, we could have fed our child something different, or we could have not been a hot mess mom or whatever. We could have done the laundry. I could have taken a shower. I don't really feel guilty about that today. Um, Shame is the feeling of being something wrong, right? So you said, the exact words you said were, I am a bad mom. I feel like I'm a bad mom, right? So it's like, instead of just the choices that we make or feeling bad about something we do or an action or something that's happened to us or the way we've grown up, like, or let's say we've had a, tra you know, a tragic or traumatic experience in our life. Like, that's a really good one. I can, because I think a lot of people, when they go through trauma, they feel they own that trauma, right? It becomes, they carry that trauma. Even yeah. with addicts, like I see that with Nick, you know, I mean, we talk, I talk about with Nick a lot. People, a lot of times when they become addicted to drugs and alcohol, they, instead of, the people that you see succeed are the ones that say, uh, you know, I was addicted to drugs or I was addicted to drugs instead of I'm a drug addict, right? They own it as part of who they are, which at one point is, you know, can, can, can be good, but because you're taking responsibility, but at the same time, it carries a lot of shame with it because it, it defines who you are as a person. Like, so for me, 
I'll just give you an example of kind of what I'm going to share about. So maybe that might help a little bit too. Um, for me, like I'm really in, obviously part of the getting rid of the scale. I've like gotten rid of a whole bunch of other things. Like I'm not, I got rid of my, my fitness pal. I'm doing all intuitive eating now, right now, which I know goes against the shift shop rules. No one get on me, whatever. I'm doing my own thing. Right. But, um, but for me, that's, I've held a lot of shame in my own life about me being flawed, like me being not able to lose weight. Like I'm going to be, I am a failure at this. I'm never going to be able to lose weight. I'm always, because I'm just obese and I'm always going to be unhealthy and obese. And so this is all new to me. So you know, I was going to cry about that, but whatever. Um, so like, not having that define me or my body size define me as not being able to like i was scared shit, shitless to do the shit shop that's what i call it now the holy shit shop i don't call it the shift shop anymore it's now after today's workout it's the holy shit shift shop because it was so crazy yet. just you um, wait yeah i know i'm i'm like i'm pretty excited but you know it's a little scary today um yeah i told vicky i was like there is no way i'm going to be able to do these things because i you know, I'm still a hundred pounds overweight. I'm freaking 41. I've been paralyzed and have major back injuries, right? I was using all of these things as like who I was instead of focus and, and really carrying that with me as, and it was really limiting me. And so that's what I'm going to talk about in my Transformation Tuesday post is not just, you know, a whole, oh, this girl was sad. No, I'm all happy. You know, whatever. It's going to be about the evolution of that and, and letting go of of the limitations that I put on myself, you know, and pushing through them and stuff like that. I don't know, something like that, but whatever. Does that make sense? I don't know. Yeah. I'm not all of a clump here, and you know. So then I started rambling, so I don't even know if that makes sense. Hey, they're used to it. They hang out with me. I know, I know. <laughs> Only one of my coaches is Andre, I think, so. But y'all got, y'all, all, all the other ones get me too, so. I get you. I got you, girl. Um, yeah, so transformation Tuesdays are a great way, whether you haven't posted in a long time or at all, or you're just starting out, it's a great way to share part of your story and let people in and be vulnerable and show that it's not about perfection and show that it's okay to mess up and show that you're working hard, that you're putting in effort to become a better version of yourself, to become a more a stronger woman to become you know whatever whatever it is that you want to become and it we're not we're not the cookie cutters you know there's not like um i don't know where i was going with that but we're, we we all have our different goals or different um things that we want to achieve physically mentally financially whatever and putting yourself out there, you're just saying, you know what, I'm showing up and I'm showing up for me. And these are the things that I've been working on. These are the things that I'm working towards. And you get people to join you along the way. That's what we do. Right? Don't get to work. I'm just kidding. Let's take a selfie. Oh, wait, let me end the recording super awkwardly. So thanks for watching the recording.